Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, March 27th, 2020. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front over there in Asia, everybody was happy. It was up. But then it started going down in Europe, down in America. Even gold went down a little bit. Then oil, woof, bam, boom, bop, ba, da, bop, bop, boop. And Bitcoin down. Ooh, I shouldn't be happy. I shouldn't be happy. I got to be, I got to be serious here. We're in pandemic times. Can't have a good time. Can't have a good time in pandemic times. So what do we have here? Dow drops more than 900 points on Friday. Yeah, they're artificially boosting this market up. As I see it, you know the motto of the Trends Journal. Think for yourself. The markets, I see no way of going up. Only if they're really, really, really artificially inflated. Because there's a global depression going on, the likes of which we will never, ever, ever have witnessed in the history of the world, part one or part two. And they're just getting hip to this. And you know, as Trends Journal subscribers, we were way ahead of the curve. As everybody was freaking out about the pandemic, no one was talking about the implications of closing down the global economy. And as we speak, about 3 billion people are in lockdown. Oh, and how many died so far? Oh, about 27,000 worldwide over a population of 7.7 .7 billion people. And it's been going on since December, late December. Hey, how many people died in Yemen from the bombings from Saudi Arabia and the United States and the UK and the other countries giving them weapons to destroy them? How many died in Syria? Only about 500,000. Oh, how about all those Ebola and crisis in, in Yemen, the, the people suffering? That's all right. Only about 10 million of them, the worst humanitarian crisis on earth. But who cares about that? You know, we won't talk about that. Cholera. That's the other one. They're suffering of cholera epidemic. Anyway. Stocks fell sharply on Friday. Again, I do not see the markets. They're going to be artificially pumped up. There's no way. There's no way that earnings are going to be worth anything except for a few companies. So you buy the longs and you short the shorts. Stocks fell sharply on Friday, giving back some of their strong gains experienced the previous three days to cap off another volatile week in Wall Street. Dow Jones Industrial dropped 900 and 15 points. Boeing dropped 10.3%. Boom. Yeah. Forget the airlines. They're in, in, in America, in Arizona now, they're bringing all these planes that they're not using. Bring them over there because it's a dry climate. They're filling up the place and the fields, the airfields. So what else? Still the major averages posted strong gains for the week. The Dow rose 12.8% to date, its biggest one-week gain since 1938. So you go back to 1937, stocks rallied more than 60% before falling again. So. They keep comparing this. They say, oh, this is great. The other day, oh, the markets went up. It was the biggest rise since 1931 in the Dow. Yo, 1931. Oh, yeah, the beginning of the Great Depression. Isn't that a good number to go by? And, of course, the Senate passed a $2 trillion relief bill, the House, too, and, and President Trump just signed it. So what's happening? They're pulling a lot of cash out of the markets. That's why gold prices are going up. They went down today. But again, you do what you want to do. I don't give financial advice. I see gold prices going way above $2,000 an ounce. And then they'll probably uh, also call a bank holiday and steal your gold like they did during the Great Depression. And again, if you don't think they could do it, look what they're doing now. They're in total control of our lives. They'll steal your money like that. 
Gold eases, but eyes the biggest weekly gain since 2008 as economic damage expected from the coronavirus boosted bullion sales. A safe haven appeal it gained more than 8% this week. It's not the coronavirus that boosted sales. It's the actions taken by the politicians that are bringing down the global economy. Don't blame it on Rosie, Queen of Corona. And I know Lizzie, Queen of Corona. Mwah. Is she a hottie? But we won't talk about her. Anyway, the sell-off in U.S. equities is weighed in on all asset classes, again, leading to a series of margin calls. And what that means is that they're pulling their money out to cover their losses, and the money they're making, they're making in gold. And by the way, phew, shortage, shortage of gold. That's right. Can't buy those big bullion pieces anymore. Very hard to get. Physical gold dealers, Singapore, especially in Singapore, physical gold dealers struggle to meet surging safe haven demand this week. And silver. Silver went up. It had a good week this week, the biggest gain since 2008. You know, I've been saying silver is used in manufacturing. And we're going to see a manufacturing slump the likes of we've never seen. So silver's lagging behind gold, but it's still considered a safe haven asset. Oil drops nearly 5%. That's, that's just West Texas. It has dropped 6% on, um, on Brent crude. And what do we got the price here at? Brent crude, $24.79. West Texas, $21.56. You are going to see in countries that are oil rich, you're going to see huge, huge protests. You're going to see these economies go down like nothing we've seen before. This is really big. There's way much, too, way much more supply than demand. Oil drops nearly 5% as demand for the fifth straight weekly loss as uh, caused by the coronavirus outweighed stimulus efforts by policymakers around the world. Stimulus efforts by policymakers. Stimulus efforts by a bunch of jerks who caused this thing. Again, it's not caused by the coronavirus. It's caused by the actions taken by these political freaks and fools, the same ones that take you to war, and you ask them, what's the exit strategy? Hey, we don't have to give you any exit strategy. All we are are a bunch of psychopaths, sociopaths, and pathological liars. You don't need an exit strategy. Oh, we're going to close down the world. What's the exit strategy? Duh. Duh. We don't need an exit strategy. We're politicians. We steal your money in the name of taxes. Got it? We don't have to worry about earning a living. We're going to get your money, so we don't care how many people's lives we're destroying with our mandates. Anyway, the group of 20 major economies on Thursday pledged to inject more than $5 trillion into the global economy to limit job and income losses from the coronavirus and, quote, to do whatever it takes to overcome this pandemic. No, it's not income losses from the coronavirus. It's income losses because of little Mary Andy Cuomo. Yeah. How about that guy in California, Pritzke in Illinois, Macron the Cazzone over there in France, Conti with the U over there in Italy, one after another, Sanchez, another loser, arrogant guy. All he ever wanted was power, and now he got it, and there's a clampdown. 26, 26 27,000 people dead in a world population of 7.7 people billion people. And in America, big news, it's over a thousand are dead out of a population of 330 million people. So the stimulus bill, in effect, this is wartime level of investment in our nation. That's what Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, okay, look at this guy, look at him. The majority leader, he's at the top, man. This low cat's at the top. 
giving you the rules, the regulations, telling you what to do and how to do it. And again, we'll give you more of the details of the bailout in your Trends Journal. U.S. will acquire stakes in airlines. Oh, yeah, socialism. Socialism for the big companies. Yeah, capitalism for we the little people. Here's a thousand dollars. Be quiet as we give them hundreds of billions. They're giving the Federal Reserve billions of dollars. They don't even have to tell us where it's going. They wrote that into the legislation. And as you well know, $29 trillion secretly was funneled into to the banker, banksters from 2007, 2010, and, and, um, without us knowing it. Poorest nations need debt relief to tackle virus as global lenders. Yeah, no kidding. You think, again, things were already down. One of our top trends was the new world disorder. This thing was going down big time before that. Ah, Lebanon, France, Hong Kong, Algeria, Chile, Colombia, Peru, South Africa, one country after another, people taken to the streets. Poverty, corruption, violence can't meet basic needs. And now you closed it down. And these poorer nations, a lot of them are commodity rich, even though they got criminals running the show, so they keep the people going a little bit. And all those commodity prices are way, 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 way down. Next in line are poor, unprepared nations. Anyway, new law would steady, not restore economy. The $2 trillion emergency relief package approved by the Senate, would help stabilize the coronavirus battered economy, but likely isn't enough to bring it back to health. You got it. You're not even close. This isn't going to bring it back to health. This thing is going down with a depression like we have never witnessed. Look at all the people out of work already. Oh, and by the way, hairdressers, nails... Isn't that something, huh? They hit the, the little people, right? How about all these prostitutes? How about all these people in the media? You know, the prostitutes, the media whores that get paid to put out by their corporate pimps and their government whoremasters. They're all, they're all dressed fine and made up perfectly, as my dear friend, the fine hairstylist that I go to, and so do many other people, for the best of the best, Mark Ferraro pointed out to me, who, who he can't cut anybody's hair. But you turn on the TV and all these prostitutes are looking fine. Who's doing their hair? Who's doing their makeup? Oh, it's okay for them, Salenti. It's a different world. You're just a, one of the members of the plantation of Slavelandia. And all them politicians made up perfectly okay for them but not for you. G20 vows to contain fallout. Yeah, they'll contain the fallout, G20. We commit to do whatever it takes to use all available policy tools to minimize the economic damage and social damage from the pandemic, restore global growth, maintain market stability, and strengthen resilience, the G20 said in a statement. It's not damage from the pandemic. It's damage from you psychopaths, you sociopaths, you pathological lying freaks and fools. You're not going to fix it. This is just more BS. No exit strategy. As I said, no exit strategy. The consequences don't count because they don't need any money. They steal it from us. Target sales jump, but profits are squeezed. Yeah, no kidding. A lot more about that. UK banks call for house sale freeze as credit and virus fears hamper moves. Yeah, no kidding. You're going to see a real estate collapse, the likes of which whew, we've never seen before. Ireland reels from mounting job losses. Let's go back to Ireland. You know that I've been reporting Sinn Féin won the election so a couple of weeks ago. The reason they won was because the, everybody that works for a living 
wasn't making a living and only the very rich were getting it. And that's why Sinn Féin won. Again, the new world disorder was already disordering a long time ago. So now they're out of work. They can't find anything. And in a worst case scenario put forward by the International Labor Organization, nearly 25 people globally could lose their jobs. They ain't even close. 25 million globally have already lost their jobs, probably by about, eh, you had a good 10 to that. Yeah, like 250 million are going to lose their jobs. China reboot hits slow, rocky path. Again, look what's going on in China. Things are going back, and it ain't happening. Yep. Dwindling factories are restarting, stores are reopening, and people are venturing outdoors. In some ways, China is where the U.S. and Europe hope to be within weeks or months. It's not going to be weeks or months here. More than two months after the imposing quarantine, China's getting back to work. It's a slow and rocky process. China's limited return to normal foreshadows the potential for sluggish U.S. recovery. Consumption, which makes up more than two-thirds of the American economy, looks to be hobbling. And consumers in China and elsewhere are reluctant to spend over worries about what they have lost and what lies ahead. The people have no money. Singapore, among the first to be hit, grids for recession. Singapore's economy shrank 10.6% in the first three months of the year. Thailand, the central bank on Wednesday slashed its full year forecast to 5.3% contraction in gross domestic product down from 2.8% growth. It's one country after another. They had all forecast, they were forecasting growth. Now they're forecasting recession. It's going to be worse than that. Brands cancel order from Asia. Yeah, no kidding. Theater chains risk default with cinemas shut. And all the debt, all the debt, the miles, the piles, the piles of corporate debt, the piles of junk bonds. And again, we were writing about this before this happened. And we said, when it happens, fuck, this thing's going to collapse big time. Viacom, CBS parent loses some of his credit clout. Yeah, no kidding. And losing a lot of their audiences. The theaters, they're not going to rebound from this. People are afraid of it. When I, everybody I see, the couple of people I see on the street, like, hey, how you doing? Oh, don't come near me. And then they add their words, always, stay well, stay well. You think people are going to go back into the theaters where they got everybody freaked out? You think they're going to go back into sporting events where they got everybody freaked out? Wallenberg warns on long-term job losses. Jacob Wallenberg has warned governments to weigh their economic threat from the virus more heavily or risk depression, social unrest, and a lost generation. The Swedish industrialist, I'm just mentioning this because now they're starting to talk about what I've been talking about. Look at the cover of two trends journals ago. The Greatest Depression has begun. Keep going back. We've been saying this. It's happening. Now they're talking about it. WeWork bleeds 1.4 billion. Yeah, we, we work is pff, pff, no work. And again, people aren't going to want to work together. You're sitting too close to me. You wash your hands. You don't got gloves on. Where's your mask? Dallas, Houston. Top growing cities. This is Wall Street Journal today. Three metro areas in Texas had some of the biggest population gains over the past decade. And also Phoenix population of 4.9 million residents last year knocked Boston off the list of the top 10. Number one, you're going to start seeing all of these cities losing, particularly oil rich cities like Houston. And then I mentioned Boston because all these college towns. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
VW urges ECB to act quickly on purchasing corporate debt. Socialism for the rich. Capitalism for we the people. Oh, yeah. How much money did they make last? Let's see. Uh, this guy's plea for more dough comes after the ECB announced last week $750 billion of extra asset purchases. Yep. They get the money. You get nothing. And they had big profits there with the uh, VW. They reported a 17% rise in pre-tax earnings in 2019. Hey, how come we didn't get any of that money? Oh, but when you go down, you want our money. Of course. How stupid of me not to understand that. And what else do we have here? Slovakia to track victims through telecom data. That's right. The deep state is in control, watching everywhere you go and closing down anyone they want. Sweden bucks global trend with low number of restrictions. Huh, I wonder why. I guess they're not... You know, that's a cold country over there, too. They get sick, right? Yeah. How come uh, they're okay? Police enforce... Virus restrictions. The coronavirus emergency in New York has led to a blitz of inspections by police officers to crack down on socializing. Woo! Don't socialize! All dressed up in their, in their, in their drag, you know, that, that army drag, you know. You're socializing! Well, I killed them because they were, so, they were too close. We, we said six feet, and they were five feet Seven and a half inches. New York Police Department offices have conducted more than 60,000 inspections. This is where your money's going. Ah, studies suggest warm weather can help suppress outbreak. We won't read that. We won't read the facts of who's dying. No, no. We'll, we'll give you that later. Ah, coronavirus live update, New York mayor, New York mayor. Now, there's a guy to believe all the time, Bill de Blasio. What does he say here? He projects half the city will be infected. Hey, he knows. He knows. Cuomo knows. They give out the numbers. They know. We don't know anything. And then, as I keep saying, when all else fails, they take you to war. Got it. Got it. Simple as that. Currency wars, trade wars, Great Depression, World War II. Ah, currency wars, trade wars, Greatest Depression, World War III. You're going to see collapses around the world that are going to be beyond belief. You're going to see the military cracking down, the people fighting back. You're going to see governments overthrown. And then will be the reason that they'll make up and create. Maduro faces drug charges in the United States. U.S. authorities charge Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro and senior government officials with drug trafficking and conspiring with terrorists. Okay, I don't have to go on. People better stand up for freedom but we're going to die in war. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.